Whereas the Russian Soyuz and Progress craft can carry out automatic rendezvous but require human intervention to dock, the ATV does an automatic rendezvous in a fully autonomous manner after its control center has given the go-ahead at the last checkpoint about 11 meters from the ISS docking port. Apart from star trackers that it uses in early moments of the mission, the ATV uses several specific navigation technologies. It first uses absolute GPS, and then starting from a 30 kilometer distance from the station, it passes to relative GPS. It takes its own position coordinates received from the GPS constellation and compares them with those of the space station that it receives via the proximity link directly from the ISS. These onboard computations allow the ATV to approach gradually in increments. A difference with the Jules Verne flight will be the different configuration of the space station with additional modules and solar arrays. Some arrays are not fixed but move to follow the sun. Mirroring of the uh, GPS signals on the surface of the ISS will be totally different. So we had to run a complete new validation campaign of this uh, relative GPS system we are using between the ISS and the ATV. So this is definitely something uh, which is quite different from the last time. At a distance of 250 meters, the ATV uses its most advanced technologies, two laser-based sensors, a telegoniometer and a videometer. These were certainly the most critical systems to develop with countless software tests and simulations. For instance, a unique facility near Paris was used to qualify them. The sensors on a robotic arm locked on to the retro reflectors on a full-scale version of the Zvezda module's aft docking port on the ISS. Over a distance of 300 meters, collecting real-time data, distances, angles, relative rotation and lateral motion, the tests replicated on the ground the final approach. In flight in 2008, the Jules Verne brilliantly confirmed this handshake method with its optical instruments recording reflections from the space station, checking that it was in the right approach corridor and at the correct angle. Any single fault can happen and these fully redundant systems will still work. Should there be a second anomaly, the ATV still remains safe. Even if the completely double redundant failure tolerant main computer should stop working, a fully independent unit would take over to ensure safety. The final mating with the ISS uses the well proven Russian docking system. A one meter long probe on the ATV slides into the 60 centimeter cone of the docking ring seen here during tests in Kuru and at EADS Astrium. At its center there is an intelligent sensor that detects contact with the probe, then clasps and brings it in, ensuring an airtight connection, whilst hooks and bolts fasten the ATV. Built-in plugs and sockets connect the data, power and fuel lines. The docking will be monitored by the ATV control center in Toulouse and by the astronauts in the ISS. Paolo Nespoli and his colleagues will be eager to welcome the supply vessel but will remain on their guard. When ATV approaches, their mindset is there may be this malfunction or this one or this one and they are spring-loaded to jump on any anomaly. They must ensure ATV either touches at the right place at the right speed or doesn't touch at all. But all involved in Europe's space freighter program remain confident that the Johannes Kepler mission will be safely accomplished.